Okay, it's time to do some back prop on a deep neural network. And by deep, I really just mean that it has at least one hidden layer. So this will be a two layer perceptron. And we have two inputs. And each of these inputs gets sent to two neurons of the hidden layer. And so we have four weights in the first step. And at the next step, we have two weights onto our output neuron, W5 and W6. These uh, neurons also all each have a bias that they get as input. Theta 2, theta 3, and then let me see if I can, sorry, that's not great, squeeze in that theta 1 there. Okay. So, um, what are our equations for this model? Well, we have y1 is equal to f of w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus theta 1. y2 equals f of w... Ah, sorry, I'm already messing things up. This should be a w3 here wasn't too clever with my indexing. x2 is w2 x1 plus w4 x2 plus theta 2 and then z is going to be uh, a weighted and nonlinear transferred sum of y1 and y2. Okay, here we are. That's our equations for our two-layer perceptron. We're going to use the sigmoid, as that behaves nicely when we do backprop. We could use the ReLU, uh, but we're not going to use it. And we're really just going to study training it to obey the following situation where we have x1 and x2. I'm going to remove that and just so we don't start thinking about the and operation because we're not really doing an and operation. This should imply that z equals 0.2. And with our simpler examples, um, or simpler example that we showed before, uh, we saw how to update uh, single weight and bias uh, in just a one layer neural network. Uh, now we're going to look at one with two layers uh, that has uh, many moving parts. So we're really only going to look at one update uh, just because that kind of takes long enough to work through uh, for a weight at the um, from the hidden to the output layer, from the input to the hidden layer, and we'll also look at um, updating a bias. And like I said before, this really just relies on <clears throat> applying the chain rule over and over again. So for now, um, our network as it is, let's say that we start out with all of our weights just equaling 1, and all of our biases just equaling minus 1. Okay? You can initialize your neural network in a lot of different ways. You might use, like, random variables. Um, you may have some prior knowledge of what's a clever bias or weight to put in for a particular application. Um, but let's just take... Um, ones to make it simple. Alright, 
So the first thing we'll do is just forward propagate in order to see what our current error is. So in this case we have f of um, just 1 times 1, okay, plus 1 times 0 minus 1. That's going to give us f of 0, okay, which is going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the minus 0, which is just a half or 0.5. We're going we're gonna to stick to decimals. y2, uh, given the same calculation, we get uh, that it ends up being just f of 0, which we know is 0 0.5, and z is equal to um, f of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 minus 1, which again we know is 0 0.5, okay? All right, so that means that our error to start with is 0.5 minus 0.2 squared, which is, of course, 0.09, okay? Because our desired output is 0.2, but our actual output is 0.5. <clears throat> okay. So fine, um, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to reduce that error? Well, remember that the way we reduce error is essentially to um, descend the error gradient by updating our weights. Okay, And so we're just going to present how we update the weight W1 w6, and then we'll also look at updating the bias, theta1, okay? And we're going to take our learning rate to be 0.5, and let's just charge ahead with how to actually compute de, dw1. How do we do that? Well, we know that from our past tutorial that the first part of this is going to be d e d z but now let's kind of look back here and let me get a little maybe blue here to look at what's happening we want to go from the error that depends on z and we have to back propagate we have to basically backtrack down this network back to how w influences z okay so how does it? Well, the only way that W impacts Z is through Y. So we just need to figure out how Y, sorry, Y1 shapes Z, and then how W1 shapes Y1. Okay? Well, that's not hard. Z is a function of Y1. Okay? So we'll just differentiate Z with respect to Y1. And then we'll differentiate y1 with respect to w1 and that sequence, that back propagation of differentiation will give us uh, this derivative in terms of the chain rule. Okay, so we have dz dy1 and uh, dy1 dw1. Okay, so now it's down to getting all these individual pieces, okay? So D, E, D, Z, okay? What's that going to be? D, D, Z. Well, that's just 2 times Z minus 0.2, kind of the same form we've seen before. Remember, Z 0.2 is our target, and um, Z is our variable in this. D, Z dy1, okay, well, if we look at what z is, it's just a function that we can differentiate, and then we apply the chain rule to um, differentiate it with respect to y1, okay? So we end up with f prime of w5y1 plus w6y2 plus theta3, 
and what's inside the argument of this? Well, we just have w5 and y1 there. So if I differentiate with respect to y1, I get w5. And um, it's not hard to compute f prime of x for that. We just use the chain rule. It's, we have the sigmoid here, right? So we just do the chain rule on that. And we have 1 plus e to the minus x squared on the bottom. We would have gotten a minus 1 out in front, but we have to com compute the derivative of 1 plus e to the minus x, so we get a minus e to the minus x. The minus signs cancel, and we get e to the minus x. Okay, up top. Last piece now, we have dy1, dw1. That is going to give us just the derivative of f with respect to um, the argument. So we have w1x1 plus w3x2 plus theta1, and then the derivative of the argument with respect to w1 is x1. Okay. All right. So we've got to put all this together now. So we take the product of these three differential equations now, or these three derivatives now. I'm going to do that on this page. We get dE dW1 equals 2z minus 0.4, oh, sorry, 0.2, f prime W5y1 plus W6y2 plus theta 3 times W5 times, this is still going, that's not an x, that's a times, the f prime of w1 x1 plus w3 x2 plus theta 1 x1. Okay, which this whole thing is equal to 2 times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 f prime of 0 times um, 1, right, that's w5 times f prime of 0 times 1, okay? Because this is 1, this is 1, this whole argument 0 here, this whole ar argument 0. Okay, what's f prime of 0? It's just going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 squared, so that's a, a fourth. So we get 0 0.25. So we end up with um, 0 0.6 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 which is equal to 0 0.0375. And finally, when we do our update, W1 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 times, because this is our R here, this is our original, or like W1 old, this is R, our learning rate, and then this is 0. Ah, 0.375, so that's our DE, DW1, yeah, and we can work that out, that's about 0.981, cool, so that is our first weight update of our two-layer uh, perceptron, um, in the next video I'm just going to wrap up by talking about uh, the uh, updating uh, the, the weight W6 and also updating the bias. Um, but I can't go over 15 minutes, so i got to stop this one now. See you in the next video.